Welcome to another Cooking 101 on a Budget. Today we're gonna to be making homemade ham and scalloped potatoes with a side salad. My daughter Izzy loves potatoes and she said, please, please will you make your homemade scalloped potatoes? And I thought, perfect. So I've made my grocery list we're gonna head to the grocery store, get what we need on a budget, and then we're gonna come back and make it. So I have already made my grocery list, and I have to tell you, I have a lot of people asking me, you know, do you have any advice on cooking for big families and saving money? Make sure you do a list. Before you go to the grocery store, write down everything that you, you need to get, and it will keep you from getting extra stuff. Will you get extra stuff? Sure, you'll probably get extra stuff. But when I started making a list, it was, a, it was a game changer. And I had to do this years ago because as I had more children coming into my home, you know, you go to the grocery store with kids and they want everything. And so I had to start making a list. Sometimes I'd have my kids make a little list also just for fun of things that they might want. And of course I go through that list. Um, so I have made my list for our scalloped potatoes. I'm also gonna make a salad because we are trying to get healthy here in the Bell family house. And so I've gotta start adding more fresh veggies into and our so meal. on the list is we're gonna I'm gonna get yellow potatoes you can get whatever kind of potatoes you want but I really like yellow potatoes um ham half and half now if you want to use whipping cream or chicken broth you can whipping cream is a little more expensive and we're trying to make a meal on a budget so half and half is a lot cheaper and it's not as thick too so if, I know some people don't like like maybe texture issues they don't really like a whipping cream so you can actually use half and half so that's what we're gonna do today I need one large onion, butter, flour, salt and pepper, ground mustard, garlic. I'm gonna add carrots to it just to add some more veggies. And then I wanna do a white cheese. So I put down white cheddar cheese. I might change it up and do like a provolone because I wanna stick with the white cheese. I don't wanna do a orange cheddar cheese. I wanna just stick with white. And some, some of the cheeses that you buy, if you cook them on too high a heat, they curdle, but some cheeses melt really, really well. Like a provolone melts really well. Swiss cheese melts really well. Um, so you have to be careful when you're cooking with cheeses if you get your heat too high because you could ruin your dish. And then for my salad, because we're trying to make a budget meal, I have lettuce, cucumbers, bacon bits, tomatoes, radishes, carrots, and then I'm gonna put down ranch dressing. Um, we all have favorites in our family for dressings but we all like ranch. So I'm gonna buy just one bottle of ranch for all of us to use. And so I'm, I'm anxious to see what we can, you know, what I'm gonna spend on this meal because there is 10 of us. And so, you know, divided by 10, I'm just curious how much this meal is gonna cost us because I am trying to make meals on a budget. So let's get our purses, get our shoes on, grab our list and let's head to the grocery store. Before we get on the road, you might have noticed I grabbed two grocery bags. Why? Because this is Cooking 101 on a budget. And so I only want to fill up two of those bags. Now, this isn't normal for me, but I can do this. I can do this. So I have my two bags to get the meal just for our dinner the cheapest possible way we can. So let's head to the grocery store. As you can see, I only spent $55.53 
for the scalp dinner with salad. So for our family of 10, that's $5 a person, but you only use one cup of the flour, so you'll have flour left over. I only use two tablespoons of the garlic, so you have garlic left over. Um, so there's some things here that, you know, you're not gonna use all the carrots, you might not use all the potatoes, so you can actually turn this into a two meal. If you wanna make it as big as we do, you can have leftovers and make scalp potatoes two days in a row. So some of these things that I bought, you don't use them all. So it, I mean, I'd say a little cheaper than that. I mean, I'm gonna say like $45 because I'm only gonna use one cup of flour, like I said. Um, so now we're gonna head home, get the meal made. And I was actually kind of shocked as I'm putting things in my cart, I'm like, wow, this might be a lot of money, but it really, really wasn't. And like the lettuce, I mean, they only had the huge size of lettuce. So I'm gonna use half of that and I'll be able to make a, a salad tomorrow for my family. So. I think this is a pretty good deal. I mean, $5 a person and you don't even use all the product. So now let's get home, get the dinner made. So here are the ingredients that we're gonna need to make the homemade scalp potatoes and ham. I did not buy salt and pepper because I had it at home. I figured everybody had it at home. Um, also the ground mustard, it was $2.99 at Myers. They had nothing left. So here is the ingredients for the main menu. Now for the salad. So here are the salad ingredients. Um, I like to make actually things smaller. I don't like to throw like whole tomatoes in or whole carrots. I like to do more shredded, smaller things. Nothing like eating your salad and then a big old huge tomato or a big old huge cucumber. So I'm actually gonna dice them up. Um, and I did do two different dressings, like I said, just because some of us like ranch. We all like ranch, but I don't know. I, I was kind of feeling the Caesar. So here is our salad that we're gonna put together to go with the scalp potato dinner. It's time to start making our scalp potato dinner. We're gonna start with the onions. So what I do is I actually slice onions really thin. I put them in butter and I let them saute and that's all I do with the onions. And then we're gonna come back and we're going to make the sauce, the roux sauce. And then we're gonna slice up our potatoes and our carrots because I make layers. So we do a bottom layer, sauce, onions, ham, another layer, sauce, onions, ham. So I layer it as I go. So I'm gonna get my really big cast iron, um, not my cast iron, my casserole dish so we can layer it. And I think I'm gonna be making two because my family really loves scalp potatoes and ham. So I'm gonna get everything I need to cook without. We're gonna start cutting these onions and getting those started. And then after that is the roux. I'm gonna add the stick of butter to the pan slice my onion really thin, get that cooking, then we're gonna move on to the next, which would be the roux. I actually got a sweet onion, a Vidalia onion. If you wanna use red onions, you can. I really like working with the sweet onions. Plus they don't kill my eyes, oh my goodness. I feel like those red ones are crazy. So you wanna kinda of cook them thin. They are gonna cook down in the butter, but when you eat your, you know, the scalloped potatoes, you don't want it to be like, oh, onions. So try and slice them as thin as you can. Just really watch your fingers. All right, this is looking good. And then if you're afraid to cut your fingers, cut the last piece in half and then slice it. Then you don't have to worry about balancing. We're gonna stick those in our pan, turn the burner on. When we get done starting this, we're gonna come back and get our roux going. All right. I have my onion sauteing. So for the roux, it's one cup of flour, one half tablespoon of Himalaya salt and black pepper, one tablespoon of ground mustard, then two tablespoons of garlic. And then I got half and half, and they come in uh, 16 ounces, so that's two cups, and then one stick of butter. So we're gonna add all that into the pan, make the roux. I also got, you know, I said I was looking for a, a white cheese. So I found this Italian style cheese. It has mozzarella, provolone, asagio, I don't know if that's how you say it, um, Parmesan Romano and Fontina. So I thought that would probably be really good because you want your sauce to be like nice and smooth and you don't want it to be chunky, so make sure you don't overheat it because then you will curdle the cheese and it'll look really weird. Um, so we're gonna get this roux going, set it aside, then we're gonna prepare the potatoes, the carrots, and then the ham, and then we're gonna start layering it together, and then we're gonna bake it at 375 
probably for about 45 minutes, but I do like to like cut my potatoes thin, little tiny things of carrots because it cooks faster. And I just, I'm just one, like when I eat, I don't wanna eat like a big chunk of carrot. I don't wanna, I just like, I like it to blend a little better. So that's why I try and cut things a little smaller when I, when I do different things that have veggies in them. So let's get this roux started and then head over to do, well not head over, like right there, to do the veggies. So I got my burner on low, so we're gonna add a stick of butter and we're gonna let that melt. Um, I'm, when that gets done melting, I'll add all the spices. I make a lot of roux with all my recipes. It's just basic, the butter, you know, really a basic roux is a stick of butter, a cup of flour, um, one teaspoon to a half a tablespoon of salt and pepper, depending on how much cream you're gonna add. And that's basically a roux. If you wanna add different spices, like I'm gonna be doing, and I do add garlic too, I'm gonna be doing the ground mustard this time. But if you wanna add parsley or thyme, you can add those also in when you do the, the roux. So this is gonna melt, then we're gonna start making that paste. So I'm gonna go grab my whisk, come back and we're gonna get this roux going. All right, the butter's melted. It's even a little brown, which is nice. So we're gonna add the flour, the salt and pepper, Uh-oh, there we go. The garlic, <laughs> I always say that garlic, and the ground mustard. Okay, we're just gonna whisk this. Sorry, I'm really hot. We're gonna whisk this till it forms a paste. Oh my goodness, crazy, crazy butter. Okay, we're gonna whisk this till it forms a paste, and then we're gonna let it kind of bubble for a little bit, like maybe two minutes, just to get that thickening agent going. Smells wonderful. All right, now we're gonna slowly add in our cream. I'm gonna start with two cups and see how it goes. Roux is so easy, you can put it in everything. You can do chicken broth if you don't wanna do milk. All right, so this was two cups. I think I'm gonna add more. And just slowly add it in while you're whisking. And then don't turn your heat up too much. It looks amazing already. All right. And I do have some leftover chicken broth from making um, another meal the other day. So if I have to add this to it, I'll just add some chicken broth to it too if we need. I also have extra cream just in case. Cause you do, you don't want it super thick. Like you don't want it like a gravy, like for biscuits and gravy, you want it a little thinner. We're gonna add cheese to it too, which will help. Oh yeah, that looks beautiful. Okay. I love making roux. I think it's like one of my favorite things to do. So it looks like four cups is perfect. And I'm just gonna keep doing this and then we're gonna add the cheese to it. I did end up adding one more cup of cream to this. Um, I had a little bit of heavy cream in my refrigerator. So I would definitely do four to five um, cups of cream. And this is um, eight ounces. So this is one cup of cheese. I do have two of them if we need to do another one. All right, let's stir this in here. I know a lot of people are like I was, I was afraid to do anything from scratch because I thought it was gonna be harder. And I just thought, you know, I was intimidated with the kitchen. And then I realized that making homemade like from scratch is super easy. Like it's not like I thought it was gonna be. And now it's like, I don't even have to think. Like I make my roux, I know exactly what's gonna be in it. So don't be afraid of the kitchen. Ooh, that looks great. Oh my goodness. This is gonna be so good. Okay, the roux looks really good. Now we're gonna prepare our veggies and start putting everything together. Oh my goodness, lovely. So I have already peeled my carrots. Now we're gonna cut them and I'm gonna cut them into smaller chunks. And then we're going to add them to the pot. So when I cut carrots, I actually like to put like a little line, like don't go all the way down. Let me show you here. 
Just a little trick I kind of learned or taught myself. So see that? So I've already cut it into fours. And so now when I cut it, I do that with a bigger part. So when I cut it, it's already into four parts. And I like to do it thin. I just, I think it just cooks easier. I think it blends more with the dish. And also before you get started with your recipe, instead of having to look for everything when you're cooking, um, get everything ready beforehand. Like get your carrots all washed. I've already washed my potatoes. You know, get your veggies all washed up, measure everything out. Um, I did that with, you know, my ingredients. I already washed everything up. So, or not washed it. I already got everything in its container. So when I'm ready to cook, I have all my ingredients out, ready to go. I've measured everything. And then, yeah, you're gonna have a couple more dishes. Yeah, you'll probably have a couple more dishes, but at least you'll be a little more organized so you won't have to run to the counter, run to the refrigerator, run, you know, do all that. You'll have it all ready to go. So I got one carrot done. So I'm thinking this is one carrot. It looks like, let's see here. It looks like it's about, let's measure it out here. So one carrot is about four ounces. So it's like a half a cup. So I think what I'm gonna do is I'm going to do, because I'm gonna do layering. So I think I'm going to do actually like two to three cups of carrots. So I'm gonna continue uh, working on my carrots. When I come back, we're gonna start working on the potatoes. And I have the yellow gold like you already seen and I just absolutely love those potatoes so much. So I'm gonna continue doing this and we'll be back. So I got four cups of carrots, like three and a half, four cups, and it took five carrots to do this. So we're gonna set this aside for layering and now we're gonna work on the potatoes. So I already cleaned my potatoes and you're going to want to cut them um, long ways because you want them like scalloped. And so I really like to use Yukon Golds because I just feel like they're creamier, butterier, and the skins are thinner and I don't like to peel my potatoes because there's nutrients in the skin. So I like to get the Yukon Golds just because I just feel like it doesn't have that toughness and they're just like, when I cut them, it's just like, you know, like it just, yeah. And so you don't wanna do these too thin because as they cook, they're gonna soften and we don't wanna make mashed potatoes. We want scallop potatoes. So you're just gonna kinda cut them like long ways. Look how beautiful that is. It's nice and yellow. I just love them so much. So my husband, we, I don't know about you guys, but we have gotten so much rain lately and my husband has been trying to hay and I was out there all day yesterday for six hours. We put up over a thousand bales. Me, Izzy, David, Josh came at the end. Haley came at the end, but it was crazy. And I was just so worried, like, look at my arms. Yeah, so that's a product of being in the hay field. So I told my husband, because we still have lots more to go. I said, next time I'm gonna wear a long sleeve shirt. I don't care how hot it is because like you're itchy forever, but we put up over a thousand bales. I was very proud that I didn't, you know, I even kept up with my young kids and um, hopefully like I impressed them. I know I impressed my husband. Um, so he is actually in the field. We thought it was gonna rain today and it didn't. So he hollered up and he's like, Heather, it's not gonna rain. Me and Josh are heading out to the field to cut it. And I'm like, okay, because when you cut the field, um, it has to be dry because if the hay isn't dry, then it molds. And so it has to set in the field for at least four days. So if we cut it today, he has to wait four days to be able to bale it and time is of the essence, especially when our summer is slowly going. My boys work, you know, they're working so much with our masonry. So us girls have been stepping up to help. And um, even my even my son, Brendan's girlfriend, Madison, she's actually, she's a farm girl, she's awesome. And so she's been helping too, which is really nice. And you know, like my girls, like Haley and Izzy, they're not complaining about it. They're like, yeah, mom, we'll help. And it's just so sweet that my girls, they're just, they're workers, you know? And see, look at this. These are so smooth, you guys. I just, I love Yukon Gold so much. I like red potatoes if you're gonna bake them or maybe season them. Um, but I just, if you're gonna do mashed potatoes or scallop potatoes, these Yukon Golds, man, these are awesome. So I did have a five pound bag. I was thinking that maybe I had too much, but after looking at, at it, I think I'm gonna be good. Um, if you have a smaller family, 
You could probably do in a two and a half pound bag and then you'll save even more money on making your budget meal. Um, I bought that whole bag of carrots and I only used four, five carrots. And so I probably could have got away with maybe doing a smaller bag. So that would have even saved on meals. So as our roux is sitting, it is going to thicken a little bit. So if you want to add a little bit of liquid when you start putting things together, you can. Um, I don't think I'm going to because with the moisture in the potatoes and with the um, butter from the, um, the onions, I'm actually going to use the butter and kind of pour it in there too. So I'm going to just keep it like that. So I'm just gonna finish up these potatoes that are absolutely beautiful. I actually um, put these in my garden and I can potatoes. I will like cut these like this, put them in a jar with water and I will actually can them. So when I wanna make um, scalloped potatoes, look at last one, last one. Um, I can just pour them out of my jar and make scalloped potatoes. I also chunk them. And so I will use that to do fried potatoes. Okay, so the potatoes are done. I'm just gonna get them back into this bowl and then we're gonna do the ham and then start getting everything ready. I wasn't really sure what kind of ham I want. Like I looked at the lunch meat, I was gonna have the deli take care of it. But then over where the ham is, there was actually like little sections of ham and look it, I got home, I'm like, what? It's already sliced. So it's already sliced. So if you wanna do this kind of ham for, for like your sandwiches, and so I was like, oh my goodness, bonus. So yeah, it's already sliced. So now we're just gonna chunk it. I was super excited. Oh my goodness. I was like, yes. Cause I'm thinking, how am I gonna do this? I'm gonna have to slice it myself. I feel like a butcher or something. But yeah, I was already done. And I'm thinking I might have to kind of go this way for my kids' lunches because it's really nice ham. This one um, was like an all natural. So it didn't have MSGs or hormones. And I just, it took me like probably 10 minutes to see which one I wanted because I just don't like all the sugars in them and all the hormone stuff in them. And so I'm really careful with some things. I wish I could find everything that didn't have that kind of stuff in it, but it's not easy to do. All right, so let's put this in here. So yeah, when I got home, I was like, what? Score, score. All right, there we go. Get all the ham in here. Let's get the other side going and then we're ready. And you know, it doesn't take long. Like I'm the queen of like get her done. Like seriously, that's why I make a lot of casseroles because I just don't have time. And so I just like to make meals that you can get done. It doesn't take hours to make. I just don't got hours to make it. All right, let's finish this and we're ready. It didn't have a lot of juices and sugars and oils in it. Oh, so nice. Okay, there we go. Let's get this in here and we're ready. Okay, all of our ingredients are done. I'm gonna clean up before we start layering. That's a big thing too is make sure your area is clean. Like pick up the garbage as you go, wash the dishes as you go, you know, clean up, wash things down. And it just, it makes it a lot easier when you're making meals to be organized with having things uh, prepped out and measured. Get your area cleaned up. Have a bowl that you can throw all your garbage in. It won't be all over the counter. So I just, I, I'm an organizer. With eight children, you kind of have to be an organizer. So I actually was an organizer before I had the kids because my mom is an organizer. Um, she And I used to be like a little over the top till I had kids and realized, you, you, you know, everything's not going to be perfect all the time. So that was kind of a transition I had to get used to as I started to get started to have more children that it's okay, let it go, let it go, let it go. That's like, let it go, let it go. That I should do a TikTok on that when you see when you see stuff sitting around, let it go, let it go. <laughs> That's my new motto, let it go. Okay, I'm gonna clean up, we'll be back and get it all together. So right now, I would turn your oven on 375 to get it preheating while we're putting all this together. So it's time to get these scalloped potatoes going. You're gonna start by putting a little bit of your cream on the bottom because you don't want your potatoes to stick. So we're gonna do cream, potatoes, carrots, um, onions, um, ham, and then more cream. And we're gonna keep layering it like that. All right, here's the fun part. So just a little bit on the bottom. We don't wanna waste the cream. We want it to go through everything else. But if you think it's too thick, mine's a little thick, but I think I'm just gonna go with it because I think as I start adding things, it's gonna thin out. Layer potatoes, super easy. And make sure you cover the bottom. Izzy's gonna be so excited I'm making this. She absolutely loves it. All right, 
tea at a time. Ham. A little bit more ham. Because you want some protein in there because it's supposed to be a main dish. That's why I added the carrots to it. Because I want it to be a main dish. come together some sauce over that and so you're gonna do this with another layer topping it off with the sauce if you want to sprinkle if you have extra cheese and you want to sprinkle that on top um, then go ahead and do that so I was able to get two this one isn't as full as this one but it looks great and then I had bought in two bags of cheese so you know what I think I'm gonna put a little bit on top and I got my oven going and this should work like right into the sauces, the cream that we made. And then we're gonna bake it at 375. I'm thinking about 35 minutes, depending on the potatoes. So it turned out really good. I did have to put tinfoil on it because the tops were browning faster than the potatoes and stuff were cooking. But it did take about an hour and five minutes to get the, the potatoes soft. So figure over an hour, just keep checking it. Make sure you put tin foil on it. And I didn't do that for like the first 20 minutes. So I think if you put tin foil on it to start, it'll cook faster, but it turned out really good. I got my salad out. I'm gonna show you guys, but look how wonderful this turned out. I can't wait to try it. And I can't wait for my family to try it. And I can't wait for Isabella to try it. Here are the scalloped potatoes. Sorry, the stove's still going, it's trying to cool off. And then here is our little salad bar. Um, I did chop up my tomatoes really small and my cucumbers. And I actually don't put it into the salad because, or the lettuce because if it doesn't get all eaten up, it gets kind of soggy. So I like to put it in separate bowls. So then as my kids and my husband come in and eat, they can put what they want on their salad. And then if it doesn't all get eaten, then I put each topping into its own container so we can have it later. So that's kind of what I do. So here it is, my $55 dinner. I'm actually super excited and impressed. I can't wait to tell my husband how he spent $55 on this for all of us. This is amazing. Oh my goodness. So thank you for joining me on our very first Cooking 101 Meals on a Budget. $55. $55. And I know a lot of smaller families, this could be two meals. So $25 a meal if you make it into two meals amazing amazing but thank you so much for joining me um stay tuned for our next meal on a budget budget on a meal uh, make sure to follow just the bells 10 share with everybody you love i know i say that every time but if you really love them you share a family with them but thank you so much and i hope you enjoy this meal and let me know in the comments what did you think how did it turn out did you love it do you have some ideas you can give me on how to add to my my scalloped potatoes and also what meal would you like me to cook? What would you like me to, what would you like me, what would you like to see me cook? But we're gonna stick with this budget, this, this budget meals because I mean, I have a big family and it's gonna get even bigger. So to be able to create these meals on a budget, $5 a person, that's crazy. And then make them so wonderful that you don't even wanna go out because you going out, $20, easy. Like we spend hundreds of dollars when we go out to a restaurant, even to eat the simplest burger joint, 15 bucks a pop. And this is $5, $5, salad and the meal. So I'm really excited, but thank you so much for joining me until our next Cooking 101 Meals on a Budget. See you later.